Hello, Proctor Terrace. Well, as evidenced by all these journals, I've been journaling for years. Putting ink on paper is a practice that, especially during these times, helps clear my mind, it aids with connecting the dots, random thoughts, situations, feelings, and reactions. So especially now when many of us are feeling isolation and disconnectedness, it's a healthy outlet. And I always end my entries with an intention and a gratitude. There are other people who have found journaling to be especially effective for self-care. Here's what Oprah says. We're already wrapping up our first week together, sharing and building hope. In this first week, we learned that hope is a real and powerful force. The energy of hope can help eclipse fear and anxiety in uncertain times. Welcome to day seven, where we uncover the secret to finding hope everywhere. I find my greatest hope in the space of gratitude. I just got to tell you, because I believe the more grateful you are, the more hopeful you automatically will become. I have volumes and volumes of gratitude journals. Every night before I go to bed, I write down five things that gave me great pleasure or gratitude in the day, or five things that I'm really grateful for. This has been part of my spiritual practice for many years. Here's what I was grateful for on October 12, 1996. That's over 20 years ago. Number one, a run around Florida's Fisher Island. I had a nice little apartment there with a slight breeze that kept me cool. Number two, was eating cold melon on a bench in the sun. Number three, was a long, hilarious chat with Gail about her blind date with a guy who I We'll just refer to as Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Number four, sorbet in a comb so sweet that I literally licked my fingers. And number five, my Angelou calling to read me a new poem. What I realized was that gratitude was expanding my awareness as well as my happiness. So I'd like to share an entry from one of my journals. This is on April 1st of this year. This is April Fool's Day. I once looked up the origins of April Fool's, which is hundreds of years old and most likely started in France when they switched from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. Of course, back then they didn't have newspapers, telephones, televisions, or the internet. So many people didn't get word that the new year commenced on January 1st, not the old traditional last week of March through April 1st. Hence, those who didn't celebrate on January 1st were called fools. I only wish that this whole pandemic thing was an April Fool's prank. Maybe if we didn't have social media and sensationalized journalism, it wouldn't be as scary but the more I read, the more fearful I become. With school closed, I wonder about the safety of our children. I wonder how long we'll be off campus. And I wonder how long this pandemic will last. My generation and my child's generation have no reference point, nothing from which to draw courage and optimism. I wish my parents were still alive to put perspective on all of this. They lived through the episodes of tuberculosis and polio and somehow survived. But I wondered, I wonder if they were scared, quarantined and feeling isolated as I do. What coping strategies did they use to be resilient, to have hope? I'm wondering how this disease even propagated, how it originated. I've heard all kinds of things, all of them having to do with China. Could this have been averted? Was a pandemic in the 21st century even inevitable, no matter where it originated? I continue to have hope and desires for my future, my daughter's well-being, our community, and our world. 
I am grateful for my excellent health. I am grateful for my daughter. I am grateful for our home and the new man in my life. Though we've just met, there's a strong connection for which I'm opening my heart for the first time in seven years. My intention. I embody and emit energy that I wish to experience. So that was about six months ago. Here's the cool thing about journaling. It engages both sides of the brain. The left hemisphere, the rational side of the brain, is occupied by constructing sentences and formulating thoughts and using small motor skills, whether it's with a pen or typing. While the right side, the creative side, is ignited by the exploration of ideas and maybe you're even doodling while you're thinking. So here's some tips. This is what I've learned over the years. Write in a private personalized space that's free from distraction. Make it a daily practice. Consistency is important. Allow time to reflect and balance ground after writing. Maybe sit quietly with a cup of tea or coffee. If you're writing to overcome trauma, don't feel obligated to write about that specific event. Just journal what feels right at the moment. Things come naturally. Retain some privacy. Keep your writing in a safe place, whether it's in a book or on the computer. It's for your eyes only. And select a beautiful journal and a pen that you like to write with. Something that motivates you to pick it up. Here's what the School of Positive Psychology suggests. They use the word write as a guide. So W, think about what's going on in your life, your current feelings, your aspirations, your challenges. Give it a name, put it on paper. R, reflect, review, take a few moments to be still, calm your breath. Focus. I. Start your sentences with I. I feel, I want, I think. Investigate your thoughts. Investigate your feelings. If you run out of things to write or your mind wanders, that's okay. Read what you've already written and allow your intuition to take over. It's organic. T. Allow yourself enough time, whether it's in the morning or at night. You'll know when it's enough time if it's too much or too little. I personally like to write at night before I retire so I can reflect on the day, but everybody's time and biorhythm and space is different. Yours might actually alternate between morning and evening depending on your family demands or your work schedule. E, end with intention. Read what you've written. Allow time for introspection and concluding thoughts. Even maybe write them down as I read this, I notice. Write down any action steps that you feel need to be taken and notice any triggers. And remember to be kind to yourself. Don't be critical of your prose or your sentence structure or your thoughts or your feelings. This is self-care. This is for you. It's not a critique about your writing. Just be in the process. Don't worry that it is not publishable. Just enjoy the moment. And speaking of the moment, it's time for the riddle of the week. I encourage those who haven't uh, participated by sending me their answers or their guesses to please email me. There are a few people with a lot of coffee on Proctor Terrace. So let's join in the fun. And this week's uh, gift card is for Starbucks. So here we go. What starts with a P, ends with an E, and has thousands of letters. Please be kind to yourself and remember self-care. See you next week.